Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at some new features in Add Location. So, uh, we are doing this Add Location thing as a Beyond Desktop. Uh, I want to do that specifically because I did want to call out that Add Location actually is what we call a native extension. It goes beyond the source code, the main code of SketchUp, and is actually an additional piece of the software. So it's actually in there as an, an extension, just like many other extensions you get from Extension Warehouse. And there's been some updates to it recently that I think are super awesome, and I wanna show you right now. All right, so I'm gonna start with this just blank model. Nothing going on here. Uh, well, I mean, you know, this guy's here, that's pretty cool. But no modeling happening yet. Uh, I'm gonna go up to File. I'm gonna click Add Location. And this screen looks very similar to what we had before. Uh, I do have the ability to type in an exact location I want to look for. Uh, I can shift true north if I want. I can toggle between the satellite and the map imagery, and I can choose to show or not show the model. I can also zoom in or out, but this point is just kind of picking where do I want to choose as the center of my location that I'm adding. Um, right now, we're not talking about actually choosing the tiles or anything like that. This is just about setting it up. So I have some basic stuff here. I can choose to turn my, my X, Y, Z, uh, my axes here. Um, it does come by default pretty close to north, true north being that orange, solar north being that orange arrow. Green's pretty close to uh, right in line with that. But I can, if I, for whatever reason, I want to turn it 90 degrees, I can do that. Or if I have some weird amount I want to turn, I can do that also. I watch over here that actually does shift as I do that. Um, once I'm good, once I like where that's at, I can hit set geolocation. And once I hit set geolocation, uh, it tells me at this point, my location is set. So right now I don't have to go any further. I could just come out and start modeling. My, mo my model would act as if it was at this location uh, listed right here. And the shadows would be accurate for that location. Everything would show up as is proper for this location. But of course, I can go further than that by hitting add, add context. Before I hit add context, so I do want to just point out, I do have this toggle right here where I can quickly flip my, my uh, or, or not flip, but change ever so slightly my values here. So if I do have something that's slightly off, I can toggle that back up like with a just, just a quick flip. I can say green axis is on up versus true north. Um, I do have the option to toggle that right there also. But once I'm ready, I can hit add context. All right, add context. This is where we're used to seeing when we talk about add location. This is where I have this rectangle I can grow or shrink. Um, I can move it around to grab the land I want. Over on the left, I have the option of saying, do I want to bring just the flat site in, which is going to be just this rectangle? Or do I want to bring in an elevated site, which is going to give me the curves and contours? I'm just going to bring a flat site in for this first one. Uh, do we want to bring in texture map texture? Yes, I do want to bring this in. And do we want to bring in 3D buildings? This is brand new for this version. Um, so right now I have these little things right here, little, little warning messages. There is no 3D buildings in what I'm grabbing right now. If I make this bigger and I will lap over some of these white boxes, it's going to go, oh, got some buildings. Do you want me to bring these in? Yeah, sure. Bring those all in. Let's, let's, let's bring that in. And we're going to say import site context. So it's going to go grab my information. And I have the option right now to import more. I'm just going to hit close right now. We're going to come back to this, but I'm just going to hit close. All right, so let's back out of here. All right, and you see this is what comes in. So right now I have this big image and then any of the buildings that my selection window overlaps. See, they don't have to be fully inside. A lot of these are fully inside, but some of these are just right on the edge. The whole uh, shape does come in. Um, just to look at what this means, if I go up to my tags, I do have this new sub, this new folder called geolocation content. If I expand that, I only brought in the flat site, so I just got one more folder, which is flat site, and in there, I have 3D buildings and map texture. So map texture, I do have this one map right here in 3D buildings. If I expand that, I have one group that shows my buildings. Everything does come in locked. You can see it's red right now. Uh, so that means it's locked. So I can toggle it on and off, but I can't double click to edit it while it's locked. Of course, it's SketchUp. So if I really want to make a change, I can right click and say unlock. 
and make changes in there if I need to. When we look at these buildings, I just wanna show this real quick. If I look at it from the side, you can see that they're all just the same height. I don't know that height, let's see, what's, what is that height? Let's go check and it says, uh, it's just under 16 and a half feet. So that's what we got. This is brought in because there's not more detailed models at this location. All right, that's pretty good, but let's say we wanna go a little bit more. We want more. I wanna go grab uh, a shot from a spot that has some terrain. Um, this spot is in the town I live in. Uh, it's a ways away from where I'm at, but it does, it's pretty flat. I mean, this is, this is what it looks like with terrain as well. So let's go do another one. Uh, I'm just gonna go file new and open up a brand new window. And then we will go in and import something with, with some terrain. So let's do it again. Let's go to file, add location. And this time uh, I'm gonna hop up the mountain. So I'm gonna go to a place called Breckenridge, Colorado. We're gonna grab that. Here it is, mountain town. All right, I'm just gonna leave it right in the middle and I'm gonna say set geolocation. All right, same option comes up here. So you're geolocated so I could start modeling as if I was right here on this spot or I can add context. Let's bring in both the flat site and the elevated site. So we're gonna bring in everything and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and uh, grab some more buildings, uh, maybe like a decent amount of buildings. You can see that anywhere that blue box crosses, that whole building's gonna come in. So even though uh, you know, I might just be lapping over it like that much, it's still gonna bring that, that building in. All right, so that was good. Let's do it, let's bring it in and see how this is different from the last one we did. Um, another thing I do have the ability to do at this point is I could import more. So if I click on import more, what it's gonna do is gonna show me, here's your original import. And if I want to now, I could actually grab these handles and go grab a second set of terrain. So let's go ahead and grab all of this and say import that site context. So it's gonna bring in my original section plus a new section. I'm gonna go ahead and close now. So if I back out, you can see, all right, there we go. I'm starting with a flat map and I do have a whole bunch of these buildings, these context buildings. You see, once again, they're all just kind of the same height. These are just sort of representative buildings. They don't have a whole lot of detail in here for exactly the shape. Um, you can see some of them are more accurate than others. Uh, this one seems a little off, so it's possibly there's been a remodel or something like that since that data was generated. Uh, but you can see generally they trace the foundation or the, the footprint and then they go up to a standard height. If I do look at my folders this time, I'm gonna go to my tags. I'll start with the flat site. If I span the flat site, if I go to either map texture or 3D building, you'll see I have two sets because I did two input imports, excuse me. So these actually, they look seamless, they blend together perfectly, but they are actually saved separately on separate tags. So that makes it real nice and easy to go in and change things on and off, especially if you're doing like, you know, like a main high detail spot and then maybe less information on the outside. Maybe your context building's only in this one block radius and then everything else is just imagery and I don't have context buildings, that sort of thing. Uh, you could very easily control that through multiple imports. Uh, and if we toggle off the flat site and toggle on the elevated site, we'll get something different. So you can see this neighborhood is on a hill and it is kind of flowing downward. A couple things. One thing I want to point out is, see this, uh, this is not like a flood of milk coming up the side. This is actually where the... The point that I picked is at the origin right here. So this is at zero high. So from this point, uphill is going up, downhill is going down, and I have uh, some of my model is crossing below the ground plane. Easy enough to fix if you do go into styles and go to this middle tab right here where I have ground, I can turn my transparency all the way up and then it won't, uh, it won't show that plane covering up. Just a little bonus note there for you. All right, so if we continue on with this piece right here, we can see very similar information. It did take these uh, buildings, our, our kind of representative massing models of, of our context buildings. You can see the way it puts them in. It puts uh, the lowest point touching the ground and then the rest of it goes above or below, or below, what I'm saying. If the lowest point is touching, <laughs> then it drops below the ground like that. So again, this may not 
be perfect for for exactly how the model's built. Um, I don't recognize these buildings. I don't know how they're actually built, but I'm guessing that something like this, where it's multi-unit, that probably steps with the grade. It's probably not shorter on one side than it is on the other. But again, for a context building, uh, this is quick and easy import. Now, in both these examples, I pulled in context buildings where there wasn't a whole lot of data. Let's go grab one more empty model and let's pull in something from a location that there actually is data. So I'm gonna to go to file, add location on a new model, and I'm just gonna to go to Denver, Colorado. Looks good. I don't know Denver very well, but yeah, let's, let's look at uh, Pioneer Pipe. I'm gonna set geolocation, same information as show up here. I'm gonna add context. And as I zoom out here, I'm gonna turn off my 3D site because I just wanna bring a flat site with 3D buildings is what I'm interested in right here. But if you look, Look, at, look what's happening over here. Look what's happening down here. We got all this additional data and information. Our buildings aren't just boxes. We can tell we have additional stuff going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and import that. I did a big import there. There's a whole lot of stuff. And look at all those buildings coming in. All right, let's go ahead and close that and then take a look at what we got. Whoops, ended up inside a building. All right, so those buildings, you can see much more information. So these buildings are all showing up different heights, which leads me to believe they're probably based on more information than what I had before. I also have some details on the top. So at some point, somehow additional modeling information showed up here. Uh, so just kind of a little more detail in context models. They're not, they're not high detail. They're not, you know, this is not a, a, a renderable image, but it is much more information, much more accurate. So if I wanted to do something like generate my shadows or something on where I'm building, this would give me a much more realistic uh, look at how that is gonna impact my model because the heights are correct. The other ones with just the boxes of a specific height are still useful if I could pull that data on those models and get them right, or maybe put, you know, there's residential. So if I put a basic pitch roof on there, I could probably get something closer to reality. But you can see with this, much more information more populated area like this is more likely to have that data in there and uh, give me just just a step up as far as uh, inferenceable or referenceable information inside of my model. So there we go. That is available right now in ad location. Right now being June 2025. You're probably watching it after that because you can't watch it before now because it didn't exist till now. But if you're watching it afterwards, this exists and you can go pull this in right now. Uh, check it out. It is very, very cool. It's very helpful. And I would love to hear in the comments what you think of this and how you could use it in your regular workflow. Uh, if you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos every single week, like one a day, including a live stream on Friday. And you'll be notified of that if you subscribe. But most importantly, leave us a comment down below. Uh, what do you think of this evolution of ad location? How do you see this working into your workflow? Let us know down below. Or if you have another idea, if you think of something that you think would make a good video, something we haven't covered or we should go into more depth on, let us know about that in the comments too. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.